Hello from fans. On this video, we will be looking at clips of Sarah and doing a deep character breakdown of what she actually did. Now, I want to make a disclaimer. There'll be no make-believe stories or fictional stories here. Just theories around what she did and what it could possibly mean. Now, if this is your first time joining, I am the Movie Guru. And before I start this video, please, please, please remember to subscribe and like this video as while the show is finished for season two, I will be doing a ton of rewatches and character breakdowns just like this one until season three returns. Is Sarah a victim of supernatural manipulation or a master manipulator and serial killer herself? On this episode, I want to deep dive into who is Sarah Myers claimed to have arrived in Frumville only for a few months from about six months to one year and told us she was from New Hope, Pennsylvania. She was leaving her home in New Hope when her brother came to get her and take her back to Boston and they were driving back when they ended up in Frumville. She also mentioned that she was in an abusive relationship and that's why she had to leave New Hope, PA. Do we believe this story? Is this actual facts or is this cap? In this episode, we're going to break down and watch a couple clips and discuss the current information on Sarah. Full name, Sarah Myers. Little sister to Nathan Myers. Killed by her own hands in season one, but in her psycho serial killing spree, Sarah killed more people in from than the nightmare creatures confirmed kills of two people indirectly responsible for two other people and attempted suicide. So let's look at the information we have. Where is she from? New Hope, Pennsylvania. So I Googled the st statistics for New Hope and it says there's 2,606 residents in New Hope, PA with a median age of 56. New Hope is in Bucks County, if you're familiar with Pennsylvania, and is listed as one of the best places to live in Pennsylvania. It says New Hope offers residents a dense suburban feel and most residents own their own homes. There's many young professionals and residents tend to live conservatively. The public schools in New Hope are highly rated. So it's safe to say Sarah is not from a economically disadvantaged era if this is where she's from we know this is where she was at but it seems to be a very happy cheerful easygoing good place to live of course that all depends on your situation your relationships now we know that she had a domestic violent relationship where she was the victim of domestic violence and because of that she left one fact about new hope is there's a ton of witch stores and practitioners of pagan and wicker religion. Now, this could be a big clue onto some of the things that's going on with Sarah and how she connects to this whole place. In the about section of the New Hope PA page, the title reads a walkable river town with plenty of witchcraft stores, restaurants, art galleries, antique shops, historical buildings and museums. Now, I had to read that over again because they threw that in there and just kind of went on with their sentence like it was a normal thing. It said plenty of witchcraft stores, right? Comma, restaurants like it was an everyday thing there. So I'm guessing that most of the people in this area are either practicing, connected to or come from descendants of pagan witchcraft uh, and those type of rituals and routines. So could this predisposition to the dark arts and supernatural have connected with her here because she was already susceptible in the regular world. And now that she's in Frumville, she's more susceptible to it there and is really manifesting. I mean, Sarah personally, her aura, her look does give witch vibes, not the old creepy hag type witch, but more so of the glamoured. This is a magical look type of witch that possibly could have 
post ritual meaning like if you're familiar with most of the witch stories they capture kids they do some sort of blood ritual to make them young again so they can go out and continue for another hundred years doing whatever it is they do and that's kind of what i'm kind of getting from sarah i never really believed that she was from where she was from or was her backstory was the story that she was told even though she did have her brother nathan that was there to back up all her stories nathan confirmed they were driving back to boston but you know there's a big connection between these two places pennsylvania and boston boston site of salem witch trials and even pennsylvania doing some research there was a i guess you could say a witch trial in the pennsylvania delaware delco area a hundred years before the salem witch trials so there's a long history of that going on plus that area from boston to pennsylvania being one of the original 13 colonies uh, there was i'm sure a strong undertone of witchcraft so i don't know about you but this could be a huge clue to how why sarah does what she does because of her demeanor of course we look at her as this fragile helpless girl but i'm starting to think in reality she is the black widow and what i mean by that is there was a drawing in one of victor's drawings where there's a spider that comes down and we know on the show there's been two references a references of a giant spider and then the picture reference of a spider there's drawings of scarecrows and boogeymen, giant spiders. This is definitely a class. Now, we didn't actually see a spider, and we know that most of the references on the show are literary references. Uh, for example, Great Ball Magic Fire. There was no Great Magic Ball. Uh, it was a reference to Christy and what they used to say during medical school. And so taking that to this, there's no actual spider, but a Black Widow often a term used for a predatory female who kills their mates or people around them or just an aggressive murdering female. And that really, really fits Sarah's character on this show. More info surfaced connecting Sarah to witchcraft, including a popular topic on Reddit now, which is called the Sarah Martin Connection. Uh, so Redditor Different Pain 3629 mentioned that so sarah didn't want to talk about where she was really from when she got to fromville she only stated that she left new hope and wanted to travel to boston now if you go into boyd's office where they have the map with the pins of where everyone is from and you check and you pretty much look at the different areas there's pins then there's lines and then there's names drawn so you can see where jade is from you can see where kenny and his family was from and a whole bunch of other people supposedly who traveled to uh, Fromville and anyone that was deceased, they had a line crossed to their name. And so in the picture, we see Sarah and Nathan and we see it by Boston. And so in one picture, there's her pin by Boston. As the season goes on, they show the map again and Sarah's pin has moved, not to another state, but just a little bit to the left. And what the Redditor pointed out is that the pin is now closer to a part of, I guess, Boston or Massachusetts called Millbrook. And Millbrook is the town that Martin said he was from. Now, this could be a big connection or it could be nothing. You know how the show goes. But if it is, you know, we could pretty much trace a connection from Martin to Sarah to Pennsylvania, you know, and even to from where they could be connected again. And this connection could mean that Martin could be a manifestation of Sarah or Sarah just not who she says she is. Sarah says she entered the faraway tree and that she took her back to the basement. And I don't know about you, but I don't think that that was accurate. I believe that she didn't even enter the tree at all. Um, but I have another theory about where they were anyway. So I'll get to that later. If she did enter the tree, it could have been that she didn't go into the well, but she popped out at the top of the well and she could have been the one that threw the rope down and then exited the basement if that was a tower but i guess we're assuming that that was a tower if she's working with martin or the boy in white who could be the same person sarah could be a manifestation of them as well i believe 
that Sarah and Boyd were dragged into a faraway tree by whatever that was that dragged them, either a giant spider or a gust of wind, but whatever it was, it took them into a faraway tree. And when the storm came and they exited the storm from the far, from another faraway tree that the boy in white made appear. And since he had made it appear, he could control where anyone went. We know he controlled Boyd to go into the well. And if Sarah entered it, he could have controlled where she went as well. And so the theory is that she didn't she went to that same location. She just didn't appear in the well. She appeared at the top. And that could be possibly how she threw the rope down because Sarah Martin and the boy in white are all either the same entity or Sarah's controlled by that entity. The entity took them where Martin was, which to access it from the normal world we know from season two is by the torch. And we saw Boyd, he lit the torch in season one and the basement dungeon vanished. But in season two, he lit the torch and it appeared. So meaning that Boyd already had to be in to light the torch to get out. So it's reverse. Now, I also believe that Boyd would have stayed in this alternate world if he hadn't found the torch or if he didn't put the torch out. Now, let's talk about Sarah, the serial killer. Sarah is the spider, a.k.a. the Black Widow, shown in Victor's drawings. Now, the FBI's crime classification manual places serial killers in the three categories, organized, disorganized, and mixed. Many contemporary personality psychologists believe that there are five basic dimensions of personality, often referred to as the big five personality traits. These are extroversion, agreeableness, openness, conscientious, and neuroticism. Now, neuroticism is a trait that reflects a person's level of emotional stability. It is often defined as a negative personality trait involving negative emotions, poor self-regulation, defined as an inability to manage urges, trouble dealing with stress, a strong reaction to perceived threats, and the tendency to complain. Further breakdown of this explains that neuroticism can become a crash and burn dynamic. Further breakdown of this explains that neuroticism can become a crash and burn dynamic where negative beliefs about yourself lead to ineffective social functioning, which then confirms those negative beliefs and further reinforces neurotic tendencies. Sarah is 100 percent neurotic. Now, this could be the supernatural manipulation or could just be her character. She definitely plays the role and gives off those serial killer vibes. In the first episode, we see Sarah sitting on the steps of Tom's bar, watching the RV come for the first loop. We later find out they, the voices, told her to be there and that two cars were coming. They told me those two cars were coming and to stand out near the edge of town, and I would see. They said it happened before, that two cars came on the same day, and everyone died. They said it was because of the people in the cars, but if, if I did what they said, then we'd be safe. We'd get to go home. At this point, it's safe to say that she's been hearing voices for a while before the Matthews families arrived. And this has been an internal battle with her. Now, we can also assume that she may have been responsible for cross for a lot of other people in the village getting crossed off the list as well. This could not be the first time. This could just be the, mo the time she got caught, basically. I don't know why she decided to give in at this particular time. I'm sure whatever entity reached out to Sarah, of course, I'm sure they attempted to reach out to other people. It seems she gave in and went along with the devious plan at that moment. I feel like at that moment, she understood what it all meant and why she had to do what they told her to. I'm not buying that she did it because she wanted to go home or protect the brother. What did she have to go home to? She was in between places going from New Hope, PA to Boston, and I'm sure mentally and physically drained from the past abusive relationship. It wasn't like 
like she had a family and kids waiting for her back in the real world. My question is, if she was told to go there for the RV and the Matthews family to kill the boy first, then why did she go for Toby first and not Ethan? Somehow she must have heard that there was an accident because she was hanging in front of the bar and her plan was to attack anybody that came to the clinic, whether it was Ethan first or Toby, but Toby got there. So that is it for my first part of who is Sarah Myers. Stay tuned for the second part where we break down specific scenes. As always, let's discuss in the comments. I'm the Movie Guru and I'll see you on the next video.